So in my last video on the localization of Hearthstone, I featured five really, really good translations that I thought showcased how the localizer is doing an excellent job making sure that the game is full of puns for the Japanese audience. In this video, because people requested it, I'm going to do a bit more, but focusing on the localization of puns based around imps. Now, Hearthstone is full of an impressive number of imp puns that are imposed upon players. That said, there are a lot of imp cards that are not funny whatsoever. For instance, this card here is called Imp Mama, which is not funny, and the Japanese version is Imp Mama, which is also not funny, making it a pretty excellent localization in my opinion. That said, I've counted at least 12 different cards that do have some kind of pun in English, so let's see what the Japanese did. This is going to be a bit more fast-paced than the last video because there's 12, but let's just hop into it. I want to start here with this card, which is Imprisoned Scrap Imp. Now you may think that this is a pun, and I guess it is by chance, but Imprisoned is actually a game mechanic in the game, and so it's used for a lot of cards beyond this one. And indeed, if a card has Imprisoned in front of it, it's a flag that there's a mechanic. And the Japanese localizers are aware of this because they use Fui Sareshi, or an old fashioned -y way of saying locked away, in any card that has imprisoned in front of it, making there be no pun in the Japanese version of this. However, there is some wordplay in the flavor text of this in English. Indeed, that flavor text reads, Impish imports imply impressively impetuous impropriety, repeating that imp, imp, imp sound. The Japanese went above and beyond, and they didn't get the whole imp repetition, but they do get this constant repetition of a poo sound in the phrase that you can see here, which is, Impu no sukurapu de bompu mo shapeu apu atawa umpu tempu, which basically means like imp scraps help even the unenlightened shape up, but everything after is up to chance. It's a bit of gibberish, but they do get that poo sound over and over and over again. Even more amusing to me at least is that music mark at the end. That's not because this is a parody of actual lyrics, but rather that's called an ompu in Japanese, so you get another poo sound added on. In other cases, though, the localization just happened through actual sort of overlap in that we Japanese has words that have the impu sound in them. And this isn't like a critique or anything, that's great. Saves everyone a bunch of time and works really well as a localization. Simple example, implosion can just become an impacto. That's pretty straightforward, works really well, problem solved, on to the next one. Likewise, inferno just came imperno, and imp bombing became impaming. Now, these are a bit more obscure for Japanese audiences than English ones, but there's a little bit of extra effort, at least on the embalming one, to make it very, very clear that they're joking around. If you go into the flavor text for this card, the English is just, with your complexion, imp bomb is a great demonizer, which I actually don't get. I'm not sure what demonizer is supposed to be playing on, but the Japanese is instead, translation, making a body not rot is called embalmingu, but making your deck rot is called impamingu. So if you go in and read the flavor text, you, they, they actually translate what embalming is for Japanese players so that they can get the joke, which is going above and beyond in my opinion. Another strategy is to sneak impu somewhere into the text in a way that's kind of hidden. A pretty blatant example of this is the card No Fin is Impossible, which is parroting both Fin for fish-type creatures called murlocs, and then of course imp as well. The Japanese version is Fukano wa naimpu. This is literally sounds something like Fukano wa nainda, which is uh, nothing is impossible, but Fuka is changed into kanji to reference either hatching or potentially more obscurely a large shark. And then the end there, they add the npu sound, which is kind of like nda, but pu is uh, I guess an imaginary sentence final particle. Similarly, imposter becomes a henshinpu, which takes the word henshin, or change, and adds the kanji normally read as fu, which is used to indicate a woman doing some kind of job. Uh, but it can be read as pu in words like dosampu, so that possibility is there. And I kind of like this one because the impu actually crosses between two kanji, which is, is kind of cool in my opinion. Likewise, impending catastrophe becomes this, which is not a word. No, not a word. But if we read these kanji together, the first is something like sain, which you would translate as calamity luck, and then the second combination is a dark wind, but if we read that using the onyomi, it would be impu, which again has that little impu sound in there with an extended vowel for good measure. The last five are then going to get pretty obscure in showing that, well, again, the Hearthstone Japanese localization team is willing to put a bit more effort than you'd expect into adding puns to these kind of cards. Uh, so our first example comes from the card Infestation, which is translated as Inshoku. Here you have In being written in katakana, and then Shoku, you can see here, means to kind of corrode or eat away at. So there's no real imp there, so kind of what's going on? Well, we have to go to the flavor text to actually understand this pun. If you go there, you will see that they are punning inshokukyo, which takes that title and adds gyo or business to it, with inshokukyo, which is a word meaning just food and drink beverage, to create this statement here, which if I reverse translate the pun from Japanese into English, would be something like, the restaurant is imp service is often misheard as the restaurant is in service. However, 
the imp service industry where small greedy creatures get food poisoning has no consideration for hygiene. So again, they hint it upon it in the name and then explain it in the flavor text. Impatient Doomsayer is then also quite complex as the title, which is Jumatsu Yogensha, has no real imp joke in it at all. So what's supposed to be funny? Well, here the word shumatsu, which means kind of end of times, is written like this. And as you can see, they've kept the shu, but the matsu has been changed into two different kanji. And the first one is the ma in akuba, or demon, which is the uh, class tag given to these animals. And then the second is to go through, or pass through. This becomes not just end of times prophet, but an end devils through prophet, which is a bit like, look, it's not the most straightforward by any means, but it does sneak a little bit of imp or at least demon reference into the name. A similarly impressive, if not impossible to understand at first glance translation, comes from the card Impulsive Trickster. Now, I'm just gonna say, can you read this at all? Well, Japanese people struggle too. I've looked online and seen people pronounce it in different ways. But basically to explain what's going on here, even if my pronunciation is not the one that someone else uses, would be that those first three kanji are either gonna be read as Toritsuki, or Toriki, depending on how you take it. That would be with Toritsuki meaning possession, and then this key again being a kanji that means kind of demon or monster. So you can read it as Toritsuki ki, or just accept that this is supposed to be read as tricky, Toriki, and then the suta comes on there and you get Toriki sta, which is a trickster that also is a possessing imp. A lot is going on there, and definitely inputting a lot more information here into the Japanese version than in the English. But hey, I can't critique people for going all out at their job. And once you do a pun, you can definitely use the technique again, because this use of key as a way of translating humor is also seen in the localization of the false imp locator card, which becomes Utsokyo, kind of a pun on Pinocchio, but the key is rendered in that kanji again instead of the katakana key. Finally, we have what I think is the oddest of all the localizations I'm going to see, as it's really only funny to really, really, really dedicated Hearthstone players, and even then, I'm not sure if they'd even notice. So, this is the localization of the card Imp Prisoner. Now, in English, the pun is pretty straightforward. In Japanese, the card is rendered like this, which is pronounced Kinkoban. Now, literally, this is forbid, hard, and kind of watch person, which doesn't really have any kind of imp joke. And indeed, there isn't an imp joke. What's happening here is that this is homophonous with this card, which is also King Goban, although in this case, the kanji are normal, and it represents safe plus guard. And there's a similarity between these two cards in that when, both of them, when they die, they leave behind a token of some sort. So you have King Goban and King Goban, pronounced the same, written differently, with the new imp one referencing the other one in a way that does no imp-related pun whatsoever, but absolutely is a form of wordplay that maybe you notice if you know every single card in the game. So ultimately, unlike the last video, I don't really have any kind of thesis statement here. I just think it's nifty that people are going all out in these translations. Are some of these quite difficult to understand? Oh, absolutely. But there's also no question that the Japanese localization team deserves a lot of credit for putting a lot of effort into rendering all of these very, very difficult jokes into sometimes even more difficult forms, but forms nonetheless, which do convey to the Japanese audience that this game is supposed to be lighthearted and a bit of fun. But if you've gotten this far, well that implies that you're impressed by this interesting, if impractical, implanting of implicit punning. So give it a like and that will impel me to make more videos on this kind of topic. See you then.